Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, a lot of people have been asking me to talk about this. And it makes me so sad to have to talk about this because the people involved in this, I absolutely adore. Um, Jesse and Lily from the Do We Know Them podcast. I really, really, really like these two women. Um, I think they're very talented. I think they're very sweet. I think they're very good at what they do. Um, and I think that they were put in an unfortunate situation. And I'm going to talk about that today. But I want to first and foremost say that I really, really, really like these women. I do. They have been very kind behind the scenes. They have been very kind in front of the scenes. Um, I think that they're honest people. I think that they have good integrity. I think that, again, this is just an unfortunate situation. Um, but I do think that they have good morals. I think that they have good intentions and I really like them. And I knew that I would eventually have to talk about this. Um, and we're going to get to it today. I have not watched their response. Um, so for a little bit of context, Jesse and Lily, these two women right here have their own podcast. The Do We Know Them podcast. We've talked about it before. And we know that recently, like a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago or whatever, they did an interview with Johnny Silvestri. He came on their podcast and they... Let me load something up before this, actually. And Johnny did this full-on interview and this was whenever he really ramped up his claims against Josh. And uh, Josh ended up reaching out to Jesse and Lily and was basically very, very, very annoyed that, you know, Johnny was allowed to be platformed on their channel and that they didn't reach out to Josh for comment. Uh, Jesse and Lily responded and basically said along the lines of, you know, we were here to listen to your victim's story and we don't want to hear your point of view kind of thing. Um, and then Josh, you know, doubled down and was like, I need you to respond to why you're allowing, you know, false claims. And it became this back and forth. And my opinion in the moment of it, and I, I can't, say that I said this in the moment because if you are aware of what I talked about in the Swip interview, a lot of people involved that had bad opinions of Johnny, like myself and Swip, had to be very careful about where to voice that online because it would look like we were just, you know, trying to silence a victim. So had to stay silent on this. But if you want to know what my opinion was on the moment, in the moment of this, is that Jesse and Lily shouldn't have had Johnny on. I think it's very easy for everyone to say that now, but the reason for it is Johnny was the one that asked them to go on their podcast. I think that they should have said no. I love the girls. I think they should have said no. Um, they are a podcast that covers news stories. Um, I don't necessarily think that they need to be one that interviews people. And they have also spoken in the past about the fact that, you know, they haven't done many interviews and whatever. I think that that should have been something that was taken a little bit more cautiously here. Um, they should have reached out to Josh for comment because as much as there can be someone who is a victim of someone, you need to have, if you're going to do an interview, fact checking and both sides of the story. Refusing to do that is incredibly dishonest. And I think that they, you know deserved backlash for that what i don't agree with is how much backlash they're getting and how much pressure has been put on them because they are a podcast they are not a journalist they are not a news publication they are not the court they are a podcast and so much responsibility has been put on their shoulders for interviewing Johnny. And I think something that's really interesting is it's very easy for people to sit here and I and be like, why would anyone have platformed Johnny? Everyone was. Everyone was. Johnny was, in his words, the main victim of Colleen Ballinger. Keep this in mind. So both things can be true here at the same time. I think that there's too much responsibility being put on Jesse and Lily, and I think they are just a podcast that was interviewing someone. And I also think that they handled it awfully. 
I love the woman, but I think that how they handled Josh was awful. Bringing Johnny on was awful. And above anything else, I think that when they fed into Johnny and allowed Johnny to come on the platform, it further created a divide between Johnny and me, Johnny and Becky, Johnny and Oliver. Johnny was now, you know, going out on his own. His own press tour had started. It was Johnny. It was Johnny doing the interview for an hour and a half about Johnny. You know, the rest of us never broke up. So Jesse and Lily allowed that to happen. And I love the women. Again, I cannot say that enough. I really, 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 I have nothing but love for them. They allowed Johnny to become the superior victim in his eyes. And that started a lot of the arrogance with him, right? So I think they shouldn't have done the podcast. And I also think that how they handled Josh was awful. Literally awful. Um, I also think it's important to note that everyone else was also doing the same thing that Jesse and Lily were doing. My Twitter was flooded with people not wanting to hear Josh's point of view because Johnny is the victim. And all of those people have been able to, you know, run and hide with their opinions of that rather than everyone collectively saying, we fucked up. Let's see how we can move past this. So there is almost too much responsibility being put on Jesse and Lily whenever the majority of people were doing the exact same thing that Jesse and Lily were doing. So it's incredibly hypocritical. So while I can say they shouldn't have done it and how they handled Josh was awful, so much responsibility is putting is being put on them. And I think a lot of people are taking out their insecurities and in how they handled Johnny on these two women. I hope I don't sound ridiculous in that, but I think that a lot of people feel that, shit, why did I believe him? You know, why didn't I see that? And I think that a lot of people are taking their frustrations out on Jesse and Lily, and I also think that's a problem. Um, so, does that make sense? These two things can be true at once. Before I watched their video, that was my problem. I had a problem there with them, and I had a problem with how the public were handling Jesse and Lily. I think that it was a shitty situation, and I had problems on both sides. Make sense? Okay, it makes sense. All right, so... One thing I want to get to... I was going to read their statement. Or no, I am going to read their statement. And then we're going to get to the video. Hold on, sorry, one of my mods texted me. So they put this statement out like a couple days after um, Swip posted the video. I think it was two days after, right? And they said, Hey guys, as many of you have probably seen, there has been a major development in the Colleen Ballinger saga as it relates to her alleged victim and our past interview guest, Johnny Silvestri. In an investigative video done by creator Swip, it was revealed that many of the aspects of Johnny's accounts were embellished, misrepresented, and or manufactured. Unfortunately, we were not made aware of any of these before Swip's video and how they were released yesterday. Okay, again, there is a problem with that, that if you're going to interview someone, you need to look into it. Both things can be true at the same time. They can be blindsided by it, and they could be blindsided because they didn't research it. But also, no one was researching it. No one was researching it. Everyone believed Johnny. And for everyone to put the pressure on Jesse and Lily, you're lying and not being honest to yourself too. Because all of you believed it be until Swip made the video. You know what I mean? So, I know not all of us. I'm saying for a lot of people that are giving backlash and a lot of people on Twitter that I saw that were writing and dying for Johnny, telling Josh to go fuck himself, are some of the main people that are speaking against Jesse and Lily right now. Some of the main people. Um, we were not made aware of this, and as such, had already pre-filmed both this episode and on Monday in preparation for Jesse going out of town for her birthday. Um, this news is very shocking and upsetting, and we will be addressing it in an upcoming episode when we are able to film. In the meantime, we just want to express how incredibly disappointed, frustrated, and above all, sorry we are. It horrifies us that we played a part, while unintentional, in allowing someone to spread a false narrative that does nothing but detract from the real stories brought forward by the individuals who have been truthful in their accounts. 
My problem with this so far is that Josh's name has not been mentioned. We should have no, uh, we should have knowing we should have never knowingly platformed someone that stood to undermine any of the actual allegations surrounding Colleen. And since learning all this information, we've made sure to re remove the interview, which is what I think was the best thing they could have done, as well as the follow up episode um, that also discussed his allegations. We want to extend our deepest apologies to the victims as well as to our viewers. But why not, Josh? Like, the, I do have a problem with this. I do have a problem with this. I hope the video is better than this. Um, for how the stress... Wait, we also want to ap apologize to our viewers for how this transpired and want to stress again that we would have never chosen to give our platform to someone if, um, if we didn't wholeheartedly believe that he was indeed the victim he made himself out to be. That said, despite our ignorance prior to learning all this we're also aware of the role that we've we've played in allowing someone to spread a false narrative and for that we are incredibly sorry we promise to be more cautious in the future when choosing who to extend our platform to so that nothing like this can happen again and no mention of josh so josh responds after their video so they end up posting the video right so this is josh's response to the video but i want to get to this first after having some time to think and process all of what's happened over the past couple of weeks, I felt I need to speak up in a more level-headed point of view. Seeing so many people make videos about difficult moments of my life is something I've never fully figured out how to deal with. That being said, I want to extend grace and compassion to the content creators who also feel blindsided by Johnny. This includes Jesse, Lily, and Ethan, who have all recently released follow-up videos on the topic. I felt unheard, angry, and ostracized, which was incredibly difficult for me given my past. My patience was limited, and I spoke from a place of fear and pain. Rest assured that these things that I need to own up for specifically will happen in my sit-down video with Swip. To anyone struggling, former fans, content creators, parents, my hope is that all of us can grow from this rather than lash out. I'll continue to remind myself that in the days ahead. Sending love to everyone involved. So, I, you know, need to watch this video, right? I am praying that it is better than their statement because I would love nothing more than to sit here and defend these two women um, because I really like them and I do have a bias towards them because I really like them. I do think they're honest people. I do think they have good integrity. I just think this is a bad situation. Big baby update. Bitch, Rylan, how many fucking videos are you going to make on this baby before it's born? Holy shit. Sorry. So, let's watch it. And I'm rooting for this situation to be... Um, sorry. My intro, what is happening? Josh's statement to us. Our response? Addressing our unprofessional demeanor. Johnny's claims on Do We Know Him? The podcast. Addressing why we didn't reach out to Josh. Okay, so 30 minutes in. We're getting to the Josh meat and potatoes, as Johnny would say. Hi, Johnny lied. We're sorry. Misinformation moving forward. Okay, I hope that there's an apology before 40 minutes. I don't know why the we're sorry part is 40 minutes. But I have not watched it yet. Have deep dived into every state. Hey guys, uh, this isn't going to be a normal intro because this is not a normal episode. We just wanted to take a moment to address some stuff that has been going on the last few days. Because there's going to be some people who haven't kept up with what's going on, we're just going to give a brief summary as to why we're here and what we're talking about and what we're addressing. But basically, Swoop is a documentary style creator on this platform, and she has been covering the Colleen Ballinger saga recently and talking to all of the victims. She has been also talking to Johnny Silvestri, who's someone we had on this podcast. We interviewed about his story with Colleen Ballinger, Joshua David Evans, and Corey DeSoto. So he sat down here, spoke to us, and her latest video revealed. A can I also say something? I think one thing that it's really bothering me, and I think it's just me hearing Jesse talk here, is how people aren't being sympathetic towards the fact that given what Jesse went through, and given what Jesse went through very, very, very publicly, it's more responsibility on Johnny literally abusing that than jesse platforming that in my opinion now i don't know why that isn't coming up more
Jesse's trauma is and has been incredibly public and public opinion. So when Jesse sees Johnny Silvestri trauma being incredibly public, public opinion, when Johnny is saying, I want to come on your podcast, there's a level of relating there. You know what I mean? So I think the responsibility is lying on Johnny here for knowingly abusing that. A lot of lies that he told not only to us, but to her, the H3 podcast, to many platforms. He lied to victims. He lied to Adam. He lied to Becky, Ollie, everybody. So this has been a lot to process. The video itself is over four hours long. So people are a little bit upset of how long it took us to respond to this. I was not in town, full transparency. It was my birthday on Thursday and my son's birthday on Friday. And we left to a cabin in the woods with coincidentally horrendous signal. And it was the worst weekend ever. And we were just trying to figure out what was going on. We did not know about it at all before Thursday. Otherwise we absolutely would have tried to prepare something. So we didn't have to take us long, but we didn't feel comfortable with one of us answering. I did put up a kind of placeholder statement that I think upset people more, including Joshua David Evans, who is Colleen's ex-husband, who Johnny did accuse of several things in our interview. And for that, we do want to apologize for not including Joshua in the statement. We did acknowledge in the statement that we were going to film a video and discuss this further. We didn't specify that Joshua was the reason we were going to be doing that. Yeah, I think he's one of the main things we want to address. And it just felt kind of impossible to properly address him and our intentions towards addressing everything that's gone on on this podcast in any sort of condensed way. It just felt like it wasn't the right thing to do, but also can see how he felt upset by not being acknowledged at all. So it was just definitely an oversight on our part and we should have included him in our statement and our intentions in addressing him completely. And as we said, the video is four hours long. And if you've watched it, you know that there is a lot of information in it. We didn't really feel comfortable talking about it until we had had the chance to watch it and to process all this new information that has now come to light. Yeah, I think it changes a lot of things. And the confusing part is that it doesn't change some other things. To be completely clear, we have things to own up to, we have things to apologize for, and we have things to change for the future so that we don't end up here again. So we acknowledge that fully. And although I wish it was this clear path to Johnny lied about everything, we platformed him, that was just a fuck up. It was, and there's also more to it that I feel in the name of trying to figure out what the fuck happened here, what is the truth? It's worth looking into, it's worth talking about and having a conversation about to fully understand the big picture because this is a mess. And although we are not going to be discussing lies in depth that he told on other platforms, we are going to be talking about lies that he told on our platform. And the reason we're not going to go into depth of all of the things that he was discovered doing and being a hypocrite about is for the sake of time. We are going to link Swoop's video if you want to see the full context of everything he's lied about and that she discovered. There's a lot of troubling information about Johnny being in group chats himself with minors, things that just completely blew my mind. I, I could not fathom that he would sit on our show, look at us in the face and like kind of bond over the fact that we're like, who would have anything in common with a 13 year old? And he's like, I know, right? And then it was him. So it's just, it was, it's been a weird process of trying to understand how deep his lies go, what his motive was. This has been a really confusing and frustrating time for everybody, for sure. Absolutely. And again, we didn't know about any of it before and we will explain the reasons we felt we had to believe him and why we didn't doubt him. But um, I know that, for example, he also did a lot of comparing his story to other victims, which does a huge disservice. And when he did come on our show, I don't know how much it made it into the final cut. He was comparing his experience that he claimed to Jesse's past experiences. It's just been confusing and... Okay, so this was the point that I'm bringing up. Like, to knowingly weaponize and research the people that you're being interviewed by and, and use that in their face. Now we're seeing it with Swip and Jesse. To kind of process disturbing it, but, um, we want to kind of take you through our thought process and explain where we may have gone wrong so to start going through the series of events that have led us here swoop came out with her video on thursday morning i believe and we did start getting tweets and notifications from people telling us that we were mentioned in it and we both did start watching and tried to watch as much as we could as fast as we could but again it was four hours and it was a lot to process i did put out a very short statement on my twitter just acknowledging that we were aware that this was out and the following day i did put out a statement that many of you may have read i put it on the community tab of this channel and then i also put it on the, pin the one we just read content for friday and monday jesse was still out of town so we didn't want to put out a statement when we weren't both on the same page and fully aware of everything and aligned. It didn't feel like the appropriate thing to like hastily respond. I also think it's better that they didn't rush to respond to anything and it be half-assed as well. Like this isn't a, a competition of who can respond the quickest as well. You know what I mean? Respond, even though that is what we were being urged. And that was one thing Swip said to me as well. I remember I was in Ireland whenever the video was posted and I was all to Swip. I was like, I'm really nervous. Like I, I, I need to gather my thoughts or whatever. And she was like, slow it down. Like, you're in no rush to respond to that. And it was kind of like, oh shit, yeah. Like this topic is so broad that it's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Like we need to figure out what we want to say and how we want to say it instead of rushing something out. It was like, what is your response? You need to answer this. But we just felt like this feels like the opposite of what we should do right now. I feel like we need to take a pause, look at what's happening, watch Swoop's video. If you watch it just once, you're going to miss something. There's a lot of information very quickly. So it's something you need to really let soak in. And we wanted to be able to do that. So we put in that, for lack of a better term, like placeholder statement. And then that night after, I think like maybe less than an hour after we posted our statement, Joshua David Evans uh, put out a statement to us on his Twitter. And it says, Lily and Jesse, you treated me like garbage even after I pleaded privately and publicly for you to at least consider giving me a voice. I tried for days. You rolled your eyes and didn't do your homework. You didn't care how this would impact my life. You wanted the team 
clicks, that's it. Your attitude was disrespectful and reckless. Your channel and intentions are literally the polar opposite of Swoop and her team. You are a prime example of why people in my shoes rarely speak up or get justice. I hope you enjoyed the money your ridiculous videos made you before you removed them. Also, I saw your statement. Funny how my name wasn't in there at all. Shame on you both, Joshua. A little bit later, he would continue on to say, they happily discussed allegations about me that are borderline criminal and could get me fired. They chose to do that. They also chose not to do the bare minimum because that would take ethics, hard work, and professionalism. Things they clearly don't prioritize in their content. That was his overall sentiment. And after he made those statements, it's kind of inexplicable the amount of pressure we've been getting to answer. I wish that it was as easy as sitting down and saying, sorry, Joshua, everything was wrong. We screwed up because I... Okay. Um, Josh worded that wrong. However, Josh is a victim here. And there's no perfect victim. Like we keep saying this on how to address something. And when frustration and anger comes out, you can say whatever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? And Josh was pushed to the limit. Like they platformed Johnny. They didn't want to speak to Josh. And then the statement about the Swips video didn't even mention him. Like, of course, he. I understand completely where Josh was at with that. And a lot of people in my chat are saying that they don't think that, you know, Josh word it wrong. Um, you know, I just think that he is completely valid in whatever anger he was feeling that he said he was and frustration and everything. And it's not up to me or anyone to be like, mm, that was a bit too far. Or, mm, don't necessarily know if that was worded correctly because we're not the ones that experienced what Johnny did to him. And... I hate to go against my girls, but in that sentiment, like, Josh didn't do anything wrong. Like, I mean, he tried to get in contact. I mean, you... Oof. I feel like at least it would be short, clear, to the point, and not, like, convoluted or have any twists and turns at all. But that's unfortunately not the situation. I do want to make it clear, although we are kind of embarking on a path to how we got here, in no way, shape, or form is anything we said meant to reduce our own responsibility and accountability that we need to take for our own platform. As well as we don't want it to take away from the things that Johnny did wrong. We are not defending Johnny at all. He manipulated us as well. He literally had everything, True. which is one of the things that we want to talk about. Because although we do think that Joshua's feelings are valid, and again, we understand why he was upset that he was not included in the statement we put out, he has painted us in a light that we do not feel is accurate. Honestly, one of the reasons this has been so confusing is because while there's so much that Johnny did lie about and that he was exposed for partaking in himself, we were struggling because a decent amount of the claims that Johnny made in our video were validated by Josh in previous statements before we ever had Johnny on. The reason, honestly, that we did feel so comfortable having Johnny on was because Joshua had put out several statements, not only apologizing to Johnny following a lot of his claims that he had already made on Twitter and in his own video, but he acknowledges them and takes accountability for a lot of them. Yeah, I think that that's what makes all of this really confusing. And what I've been kind of struggling with in my head is that what we do in nature on our show is cover topical situations backed up by readily available public information. We do not do Freedom of Information Acts. We do not typically even do interview. Okay. Um, I don't know why they said that. That is very irrelevant. Um, Josh's apologies, if anything, show how much he was accommodating to Johnny to make Johnny feel valid. But never once was he saying, like, Josh at most said if I participated in a toxic fan creator dynamic, I don't know why they're saying that, honestly. Like, before they have apologized, they're kind of... I'm gonna give it more time. Hold on. Full disclosure, we know Adam McIntyre on at least a friendly level. We've DM'd with him before. Hey. We covered Becky, Ollie, and Adam's story on this channel. We could have reached out to them to be on the show. We didn't because it's not really what we do on this channel. We cover things that are happening currently with readily available public information. And that is what we did. We pulled from what was publicly available. And the issue with that, I think, is that when you do that, later on, new information can come out that negates that original information or changes it completely, which could completely change our opinion of that original information and our stance. But I think my moral dilemma here is like, just because new information comes out that was not available when we had our first, you know, opinion or whatever, it doesn't make our first reporting of something misinformation because I personally feel by definition misinformation is spreading something you know not to be true for whatever agenda you may have and we do not do that on this channel I just find it hard to swallow being called someone who just doesn't do any due diligence and completely ignored evidence here when even Swoop herself had Johnny on as a victim talking about he was abused and I'm not saying that to point any fingers I am literally just saying that to be like everybody included him in with the victims like everybody thought he was the victim he claimed to be because there was enough of Joshua admitting it and there was enough proof that Johnny did provide that wasn't doctored that's still confirmed till this day that we were like something happened here you know it wasn't that nothing happened and he was a baseless person that just came and just talked and then it also made it very confusing because joshua is i think the johnny thing is so big because 
everyone is now putting into context how none of it made sense because there was not enough in any form. So I disagree with them there um, completely, actually. It's kind of insinuated that there are so many false claims that we were spreading with this interview. But after our interview went up, Joshua had also reached out to us on Twitter and provided a statement then that did express his grievances with the interview. And we did read it in full in our follow-up episode that was addressing Joshua David Evans directly. But before we did that, because it does take time for us to film and edit and get everything to you guys, Joshua kind of got like restless that we weren't responding and he continued to be like persistent. Like, hey, cool. So you respond to other people, not me. And it became this thing. So I did respond to him before our episode went up just to kind of like let him know, hey, we are gonna be responding to you. And I said, Hi Joshua, our response to all of your statements and claims will be in our next episode, to which someone responded to me and they've since deleted it that we be sued and that he should sue us for defamation. And I said, hi, Katie, that's literally not a thing that's possible here considering the context, stop tweeting us, lol, because when I say she was tweeting us a lot, it was a lot. And she answered again, and I'm not sure what she said, but I responded, taking accountability does not mean the victims of your inappropriateness have to stop talking about how you hurt them. We're happy to clarify the one tweet he is mentioning. Unfortunately, there's a laundry list of other things he did that he did not mention or address. And then Joshua David Evans said, I've made quite a few statements addressing the bigger picture here. Just look at my Twitter main feed and responses. If you're gonna make more content off of this, at least reach out for comment. Taking a one-sided viewpoint and running with it is dangerous. Now, we wanna play us fully reading his statement. This was in our response to Joshua, and we wanna show you us reading it not only for the sake of showing you what his statement was to us in the first place initially, but I think it's important that you watch us read it and for us to talk about it and how we handled it. And also, I just want to note that we have since taken down both of the episodes, the original interview, as well as our response. That I think that's the best thing they could have done. To show you this is one, so we can own up to anything we did wrong, but also because we do feel like there is misinformation being spread about how we handled it, specifically that we did just blatantly ignore him and that we never acknowledged his statement that he sent us. And I've even seen people insinuate that we're like sitting on evidence that we purposely did not share, which is not the case. Yeah, it's kind of spun out of control into people saying Lily and Jesse mocked Joshua, completely ignored him. I've seen people say Joshua DM them evidence and they ignored it. And I do want to clarify even that he did DM us, but it was nothing different than what he publicly had tweeted us. Let's hold on. What did he say in DMs? Joshua DM them evidence and they ignored it. And I do want to clarify even that he did DM Hey Jesse and Lily, we don't know each other, but you recently had a video go up with a person claiming misleading and embellished accusations about me from years and years ago. I wish you to know Will. Here is my statement. Okay. But it was nothing different than what he publicly had tweeted us. Let's just play the statement that we read out. Get to his statement. He tweets Lily and I and says, Hey Jesse and Lily, we don't know each other, but you recently had a video go up with a person claiming very misleading and embellished accusations about me from years and years ago. I wish you two and him no ill will. This is merely my side, my truth, and my official statement. So here's the official statement. I meant it when I said I wasn't going to engage or speak about Johnny anymore after my public apology. I've now seen his recent claims and feel backed into a corner to once again take my voice back. I've had the narrative. Okay, so they're making the argument that they did read his point of view. The claims of me being inappropriate one on one with anyone back then are fully embellished and a complete misrepresentation of those times. The comment and tweet he's referring to about me saying to a fan that their profile pic turned me on was in reference to a pic that I was in and directed towards me, not the girl. We have privately discussed this and made peace with it. At her request, I happily deleted it and apologized for ever joking about it in the way that I did. It was an awkward and terrible attempt at being funny. I never should have joked in that way all those years ago. For that, I am sorry. These claims are beyond hurtful and incredibly damaging to my mental health. They feel malicious and unprovoked. I've made my apologies and have owned up to what behavior was out of line during my YouTube years. I've done the work. I'm still in therapy. I'm three and a half years sober. I have a wonderful marriage to an incredible woman. I love what I do for work. We just bought a little house together and have an amazing and quiet life together. I finally have my chance at a new life beyond this awful chapter. If these claims continue, I'll have no choice but to get lawyers involved. I'm broke as it is, but I'm willing to fight for my sanity and truth. Okay, so a few things. There's something to note though, whenever you're reading, you know, Josh's statement and you're rolling your eyes and you're acting annoyed by it, that's not giving a fair point of view. So I don't necessarily <laughs> I don't necessarily know why they're including this video as a part of I don't know why they're including this as proof that they gave Josh's point of view. <laughs> Sorry, it's just ridiculous. Things here. I feel like even the beginning of that, he is saying he has never been inappropriate one-on-one -on -one with a fan. And that, I feel like it's up to interpretation because you seem to only think sexual things. Guys, in the chat, if you're going to be like, she explains it or whatever, let me review this in the moment, please. We'll get to that there. If I say a statement, you don't need to be like, we'll get to it in 10 minutes. We'll get to it together. Thank you considered inappropriate when I would venture to say uh, most of the things you did were inappropriate, including this tweet that you don't deny exists. Well, oh, was it Daz that said that? <laughs> yeah, Daz. <laughs> Multiple layers to this, as is the situation with any time we talk about Colleen. But number one, the issue I have with him saying that, saying I was never inappropriate one-on-one. -on -one. You have vehemently apologized for being inappropriate with fans. And you literally admit to having an inappropriate relationship with fans. I believe the words you said was like, let me, I actually want to look it up because his original, original statement. Yeah. Well, he does refer to it in one statement as an abusive fan creator dynamic. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, that's what Okay, I'm so this is the tweet. He acknowledged publicly that it was inappropriate, his, the way that he would interact with fans and that he's learned from it, yada, yada, yada. And then you're going to also sit here and be like, well, I never had an inappropriate relationship with fans. And that's just not true. Again, it's, we're not just saying sexual. We're saying that when you're video chatting for hours and hours and hours on end just that alone that's inappropriate let alone how close you got to johnny johnny even said you got to know his parents and like really got into it like that's weird on it's own. not speculating though if we're just watching it in the moment together it's not speculating it's watching the video and processing it just as well to be fair here to be fair 
to be fair. Oh. Although I don't know what's happening in chat though, so I'm not I'm I'm focused on me. I'm focused on me and my life. <laughs> we did read the statement in full. We didn't leave out any parts. We okay, no problem. Said. And ultimately what we did do okay, after this, back we to did this. explain the full context surrounding the tweet that was the correct context and then also let people know that we were deleting that portion of our interview with Johnny. But everything else that Johnny had mentioned in our interview, he just didn't address. So you're only telling us one instance, but how does that change everything else? He provided that statement and told us the different context, but he didn't provide us even any proof that confirmed that. And even so, we did remove that section from the video in good faith to prevent it from being further taken out of context. But it was confusing to us for him to be even at one point threatening legal action when he only had one correction that he was asking us to make and we did it. So that's where we get into our demeanor. This is something that Joshua and many, many others have been really uncomfortable with, have been upset with us with. During that statement, although I read it in full, there was no pauses. We didn't stop to commentate on his statement in general. You can kind of see our vibe. You know, Lily's kind of like rolling her eyes and like we are like annoyed. And that was simply because, not, not what he was saying in a statement. It was simply because quite literally we were bothered that he was so pressing on Twitter. Now looking back, knowing everything we know, we know why he was like kind of panicking after our interview. But instead of presenting any evidence that Johnny was not being truthful about everything he was saying. He just kind of was like, hear my side. And because of how he phrased his tweets. But in fairness, that's what they did with Johnny. In fairness, Johnny didn't provide any proof and they listened to Johnny. So they can't really play that card. Chat, I don't know what you're talking about, but I fucking love this podcast and I love these two women. But I'm just calling a spade a spade here. We were under the impression that there was nothing else he was trying to share and we were just going to acknowledge that statement and then move forward. A lot of people have been coming for me because I'm a victim of abuse and they have said, you are too biased to be covering things like this. Like you don't have- Which is also so fucking weird to say. You're too biased to talk about- What the fuck does that even mean? the proper objectiveness when it comes to topics like this. And I'd be lying if I said that that take did not absolutely bother me because I think that, yes, although I do have a bias to believe victims, for sure, I am able to, number one, admit when I'm wrong in cases like this. Like, it's not like I'm here to just be like, no, Johnny's still right. Like, that's just not ever gonna happen when I'm presenting new information. But I also think that my perspective as someone who's been through abuse is important in this space. And I don't think it's right to be like, oh, you're just too sensitive about these topics and you just should have heard out someone that was accused of something like this. I agree with so, her completely. Looking back, I wanna genuinely ask myself what was realistic to have changed in this situation, knowing what we knew then, not knowing what we know now from swoops investigation because that obviously changes everything but what could we have done differently then with the information that we have presented and what do we plan to do differently in the future i personally want to own up to the fact that we absolutely need to handle all situations like this including our interview with johnny with the seriousness that it deserves our demeanor was absolutely too lax for the subject i think that you and i got caught up in trying to have that chill like safe space for whoever comes on the show and that was our second that's a valid point that's a valid point you know focusing so heavily on trying to create, you know, like a comfortable space that it almost turns, you know, unprofessional. It's a very valid point. An ever interview. And we That's a good need to point. learn that in the future, especially when covering abuse cases, it's not that we can't have someone on to speak freely, but it's important to handle it in a very serious way. And I think also be more clear and direct about what is alleged and what is just kind of someone's account. Because we did mention, hey, a lot of this isn't going to have like assets and like proof. This is Johnny's account. We did mention that in the beginning of his interview, but we kind of need to be a little bit more structured and serious. About Another good to point. Be clear, our interview was not entirely about Joshua. There was a specific like Joshua David Evans section. And then he also spoke about Corey DeSoto and Colleen Ballinger because he had allegations for all of them. And I believe he briefly spoke about Trent Ballinger as well. What we realized in watching Swoop's documentary and then also watching H3 was that we were the first interview that Johnny had been on on video. While we did not fact check every single claim that Johnny made throughout the interview, there was several claims in it that Joshua himself had admitted to in his own statements that were publicly available on Twitter. And honestly, that is one of the factors that made this so confusing because when we went back and compared the claims that Johnny made in our interview and then held it next to the new information that was revealed in Swoop's documentary, a lot of those lies or exaggerations weren't made in our interview because honestly, we think that our interview, which we feel even worse about, gave Johnny the confidence to then kind of run with the story and make those exaggerations because he was like, okay, well, that one went well. And then he moved on to the next one and his story got a little more outrageous as it went on. Yeah, it was like literally- I think that's a very good point that Lily made. You know, Johnny got the confidence and the audience from, you know, the do we know them, you know, their audience. And it, it allowed him to then- you know, be more confident whenever he did H3 and stuff. Um, I think that's a very valid point. Really infuriating to watch Swoop show that he had accused Trent Ballinger of grooming him and saying, oh, like Ollie's story made me realize that I was groomed. And he just piggybacked off of all of the victim's stories to make himself into this like perfect victim that everyone should feel the most sorry for. It definitely felt like we empowered him via our interview, whether intentional or not, to kind of continue on this rampage. of. I don't think that was an intentional thing, but obviously happened, it still but happened. Now it turned into this weird, convoluted, embellished story that ultimately just became a big lie. Yeah, because I mean, even in our interview, he doesn't explicitly call 
call Joshua a groomer. He does use the term at one point, but he says that Joshua is a gateway groomer. I keep calling him the gateway groomer because I wouldn't have gotten caught in Colleen's web as much if he didn't really just wind me up in it. So to then watch him throw around that word and attach it to multiple people in his next few interviews is absolutely insane. Another thing that he didn't do on our podcast that he proceeded to do with Swoop, and I'm not sure if he did on each three, but was mock the abuse that Joshua experienced with Colleen. Specifically in our interview, he said, I don't want to comment on their dynamic because that's their business. But us fans, this is what Johnny was saying, us fans were kind of like consoling them. It would be a lot of trauma dumping on how she didn't know what Josh was ever going to propose to her. Through their problems, which I think he probably got from Adam because Adam talks about that, but who knows if Johnny actually... It's interesting. Depending on who Johnny is being interviewed by, he changes his answers. We've talked about this before, but the, the thing of where whenever he's talking to Jesse and Lily, he's saying, you know, I don't want to talk about Colleen and Josh's, you know, relationship dynamic. Like, we'll leave that, you know, that to be respectful. But then whenever he's doing six hours with Swip, he's like, fuck him, loser. Like, did personally experience that. Right, so he started off doing that and then also talking about Trent Ballinger in a way where Trent Ballinger was inappropriate in many scenarios, but never towards him. No. But then he goes on to Swoop's channel and then says, yeah, I was groomed by Trent Ballinger, but then also says, no, I wasn't groomed by Trent Ballinger. It was a clusterfuck. Just all over the place, honestly. And following the interview, we definitely were on good terms with him because we were not under the impression he had lied about anything. And honestly, even after Joshua's statement, that corrected something that wasn't entirely false. Joshua just added additional context that changed the situation, but it wasn't something he blatantly lied about. And because we weren't under the impression that anything else in the interview was a lie, we didn't feel like we had a reason to not believe him. We also did not keep up super closely with him as he did his other appearances on other podcasts because we had already spoken to him and we didn't see all of these claims that he was making. And while I did follow him on Twitter, the sheer volume of tweets that he puts out, True. I didn't see all of them. And I didn't see how aggressive and extreme his allegations were getting. True. And also any time that we would hear- It's also unrealistic to put so much pressure on these two women that they have to keep up with Johnny's every move. Unrealistic and no one's putting that pressure on H3. So I don't know why they're not putting it on Jesse and Lily. About Johnny, like even if it was just in passing and we weren't watching, anytime that we did see that, Johnny was always a victim being interviewed. So even when I know that he went on H3, for instance, I remember Adam reacting to that, Adam McIntyre, and saying like, I'm so proud of all of them. And that included Johnny. And it, we just thought that he was still the victim he portrayed himself to be up until Swoop's video. So again, we are fully aware that Johnny has made a ton of false claims, but we have been kind of in this weird limbo where we felt confused because we weren't even aware of the extent of the claims he had made because on ours, he didn't say that. And the majority of the things he said in our interview weren't being denied or disputed. There were some claims that Johnny made on our podcast about Joshua, for sure. Not to defend him or to, again, remove responsibility from ourselves, simply to understand what happened here. What did he say on our podcast that was a lie? And what did he say that wasn't a lie? One of the claims was that Joshua was an adult who gave a minor Johnny his phone number at the time. I know that was a thing that a lot of people had an issue with. They're like, why are you giving a kid who's a super fan your number? I know in Swoop's documentary, she points out that his parents were there and they weren't just there. They were like, hell yeah, you got his number. This is gonna be great for your career type of thing. Which to us, honestly didn't really change that aspect of it much because if anything that makes us more concerned that his parents were doing that but it doesn't make us any less concerned that joshua was giving out his phone number and also he apologized and recognized that giving his number to johnny was inappropriate whether his parents were there or they weren't there everybody kind of recognized hey that's kind of strange to give a minor your number however it's also worth noting that johnny did express and whether anyone believes a word that comes out of his mouth now is up to interpretation but in addition to saying that his parents were present for multiple parts of this and that they kind of knew joshua he kind of alluded to that but didn't really get too into it he mentioned that his parents had apologized to him for essentially like not protecting him that was our discussion with him so that is true. So Joshua did give his number to a minor, Johnny at the time, who was a super fan. And he acknowledged himself that that was inappropriate. And whatever that means, it means it just is one of the claims that Johnny made that is substantially true. proven by Joshua's admission. Another claim that he made was that Joshua video chatted with minors on Tiny Chat, and that is confirmed. We have received multiple screenshots from Johnny. That's never been, from what I understand, contested by Joshua in any way. In addition to the proof that he provided, there has also been a statement from Joshua where he has very much admitted to not only having an abusive fan creator dynamic with a lot of fans, but also even mentions that he wanted to extend an apology to anyone he spoke to during his YouTube career that may feel hurt or used. He said, I honestly didn't understand the damage it would cause. I got messy and sought validation through innocent people, dot to dot children. That's gross and I feel absolutely terrible for it. So while that does not explicitly admit to the tiny chat stuff, that was a reason that we didn't doubt Johnny's claim. Full transparency, when we are filming this, Swoop has yet to release her interview with Josh, which I believe she's alluded to like really pressing him on certain things. And I absolutely think she's gonna bring this up and he's going to definitely take accountability for it. I think he's gonna be like, that was fucked up and I shouldn't have done that. But that did happen. So he did tiny chat with minors and Colleen, we know did that a lot where she would like drop into these group chats and there's a bunch of like screenshots of her doing that with Johnny. Now. Johnny did not in any way say that the content of what they were talking about was inappropriate in any sexual or adult nature at all. He just was mentioning that they would do it quite frequently, which again, we do not have confirmation for how frequently this would happen, but we know it wasn't like a contest that they wanted to like video chat a creator. It was on this yeah, like- It was a regular occurrence. But he never alleged that anything sexual or like sinister took place. Another thing that includes the tiny chats that Johnny alleged and has been confirmed by a screenshot that we believe- to I'm be just letting it play because I'm trying to take all this in. 
through and that Joshua has not contested up, up till now. For all we know, all these screenshots are doctored and we're like, holy shit, but that is not anything that Joshua has claimed. He had not reached out to us and said, hey, the assets that you have are completely false. That is just doctored. That is not true. None of that has been alleged up till now. So we have no reason to believe that these are fake screenshots. But Johnny alleged that Joshua posed as him to his minor friends at the time. So he went on to Tiny Chat and had Johnny's name on the screen, but it was him, it was Joshua. You apparently do not have to have your camera turned on. You can just be participating as like a blank screen. And according to Johnny's allegation, Joshua, at least on one occasion, had entered the chat with the name Johnny without revealing himself in the video and kind of like lurked in there, which again, we don't have proof of how long he was in there or if he had his camera off at all. Like we don't know yeah. anything other than he had his face on a video with Johnny's name as a username. So we don't know exactly what happened, but we do know that either he was joking about being Johnny or something along those lines happened, but there is a screenshot to support that. The other thing that was confirmed is that Joshua hired, but without paying a, I think, 15-year-old Johnny at the time to handle his Twitter account for Sarah Dickey I Twitter. think we're all aware of that now. And I also think it's interesting, the amount of people who have, like, kind of drew the parallels between the, like, me and the Miranda Sings Twitter and, you know, Johnny with the Sarah Diculous Josh Twitter. Like, how, just how much Johnny tried to have the same story. Um, You know what I mean? Like, Are we behaving, chat? Um, you know, the the full thing of like where Colleen, you know, used my ideas for years and then was like, oh, like I, I can't keep up with the account. Like, here's the password, take it. Whereas Johnny already had the account for Josh's character. Josh wanted to, you know, have someone run the new account and was like, here you go, Johnny. I don't want it. Do whatever you want. Those are not the same stories, but then Johnny's story kept changing the more and more and more I would speak about the Miranda Twitter thing. <laughs> that he had, which a lot of people have speculated is exploitative at the very least. Like this is a fan, a super fan, and you're getting them to essentially work for you for free. And that is again, something that is confirmed both by screenshots, but it's also Joshua's own admission. He admitted he should have never had Johnny running that account, that that wasn't appropriate. He shouldn't have given him access to that. The thing is, is that we're not claiming that Joshua hasn't taken accountability for a lot of things. And our whole purpose for having Johnny on wasn't to have him spread new allegations or anything. It was to talk about his experience that honestly, we again, didn't think we had reason to doubt because so much of it checked out with Joshua's own statements. What Johnny did and the reason I think he was able to trick so many people into believing everything he said is he did take truths and things that did happen that very well may have been inappropriate and something, I mean, Joshua himself has admitted was. And he started to build on it little by little to sensationalize it, True. in my opinion, for the ultimate attention of it. And this part is what really upsets me because people have accused me so many times of just wanting attention. And I have always stood so solid in the fact of like, the amount of people that would lie for this kind of attention is so minimal and so rare that why would I choose to believe off the bat when I see a victim that doesn't necessarily have proof? Because that's one thing people are forgetting. Like my story, I do have proof in files in like courts and like law enforcement has it, but the public doesn't. The public has my word, that's it. And it has literally changed my life to have at least some people believe my experience, like my soul and what I fucking went through. That has been life changing. So it's hard for me to sit here and be like, you have to have proof for X, Y, and Z because a lot of people who were sexually abused were not recording it. They don't have proof of it. You know, there's a lot of tricky situations that it's very dangerous to just veil all of this over and be like, oh, unless you have proof, that's it. Like it's way more. I think this is that. a very great point. To go that route as well. And just I think this is a really great point, but I think the argument can be used of like, okay, so you're going to listen to Johnny, even though he doesn't have proof, but then why aren't you going to listen to Josh? Because you say he didn't have proof, but you listen to, you know, both of them are victims of each other. If we're going to call a spade a spade, right? So if you're going to listen to Johnny and say that he doesn't have proof. And that is a very valid point. Like there are so many people out there that do not have proof of their things and they're telling the truth, but that logic extends to Josh. And you're saying that Josh never provided you with any proof. So you didn't listen to him, but Johnny didn't provide you with any proof as well. So I a hundred percent agree with the point Jesse's making here. And I think it's a great point. I think it's an important point, um, but it doesn't apply when you didn't enforce it. As harsh as that sounds, as harsh as that sounds, Ugh. like I think it's a great point and it's an important point, important, hello, important point, but it doesn't fully apply when you didn't, 
You understand what I'm saying. Completely go the polar opposite and say, you're lying unless proving otherwise. Like, I just think that that's dangerous. Completely. And also one of the things that a lot of people have expressed that they're upset with us about is that in our response video, we also read a tweet from Joshua basically calling us out saying any other news outlet that had covered the story at least reached out to him for comment, but that we didn't. He was upset that we didn't get his side of the story. I believe the exact words I used was, I don't want to hear your side. And a lot of people are very upset, specifically at me for being so standoffish. People just thought overall that we were being dismissive. And we were to a certain extent, but not in the sense that he was presenting us information that was relevant and pressing and would have exonerated him. And we were just like ignoring that. That was not in the way that we were writing him off. We were writing him off because he was someone at that time who had admitted to many of the things that Johnny was alleging. I'm talking Johnny tweeted, Joshua groomed me and Joshua apologized to him after that. In fact, none of the claims made by Johnny in our interview were being made for the first time. And from what we can tell, they all do predate Joshua's apologies, which unfortunately do give kind of a blanket apology and acknowledgement of Johnny's experience, which made us think that there was no reason to doubt it. The first time he ever actually denied anything was after our interview. So he had not at all denied anything Johnny was alleging on Twitter, which included grooming. He didn't deny any of that directly to Johnny. But after our interview was the first time he ever said, hey, this is being embellished. And we found that to be like, hey, now the person that you admitted to hurting is on a bigger platform and you wanna, you don't want this to spin out of control. Had he tried to tell Johnny, hey, I mean, I know he said like, you're being vindictive, but even when he was telling Johnny, I feel like this is vindictive, he didn't say you're lying about me. No, he kept saying your experience is valid and your pain is valid and I apologize. Everything that Joshua said made us think that he was accepting accountability for the things that Johnny was accusing him of. So we have this series of events where I'm like, you're- I don't know, I think a lot of people read the Josh saying, you know, your feelings are valid and stuff as Josh just being sympathetic and nice towards Johnny rather than admitting to anything. Basically admitting. To Maybe like, I'm wrong. These but... things, and then you just want to be like, here my side. I don't take kindly to that just because of my history. And that's when people are like, she's too biased. She just doesn't like pay attention to when there's facts in front of her. There was no facts. It was a man who was not presenting information that exonerated him asking for our platform to tell his side. And at that time, it felt like the absolute opposite of what we should do. If you can present proof that this person is maliciously lying about you, then absolutely we will hear your side and we will correct anything. But that wasn't but also Johnny was oh, this is so messy uh, uh, I knew I needed to cover this but I knew it was going to be a mess uh, what was that point again fuck God, I really like to do It felt like the absolute opposite of what we should do. If you can present proof that this person is maliciously lying about you, then absolutely, we will hear your side and we will correct anything. But that wasn't being provided. And so we had this moral dilemma of correcting the record, but also feeling... Like we didn't want to allow someone who was accused and admitted to certain things to silence what we believe to have been a victim. And we want to make it clear that had there been even remotely a hint of denial or trying to challenge some of Johnny's claims before our interview, we wouldn't have had him on because it would have been one person's word against another. But we were under the impression that Joshua was admitting to doing the things that Johnny was accusing him of because of how many times, like it wasn't one statement, it wasn't two statements, it was several statements where he acknowledges what Johnny went through and says that it's valid. But to me at least, Josh's multiple statements, and I mean, this is validated by the fact that I never once spoke about Johnny and Josh, never platformed him saying that. The more Josh apologized, the more it came across that Johnny is slandering him and lying on him. That's how it read to me. Maybe, you know, I never once took it as, oh my God, Josh is like, you know what I mean? So we definitely didn't think that he was challenging Johnny's entire account of what happened because he didn't. Really quickly, just to touch on what he did lie about on this podcast, because he did flat out embellish several parts of his story that I believe he, again, just kind of took advantage of the fact that he had proof for just enough to not be doubted for other things. But he did lie and say that Joshua made Johnny go to shows multiple times. And looking back, this is something that we could have pressed him further about because in my head at the time, it did not make a whole lot of sense. Yes, we for sure could have pushed him harder. But again, the nature of our show and how we had that conversation play out was very much having Johnny tell us his experience. We weren't trying to interrogate him. Yeah, I feel like uh, if, if I remember correctly, I think but you did just say that, like, that's what you wanted to do to Josh, though, if he wanted to defend himself. So I think I think what we should do is is just say that we shouldn't have had Johnny on and we apologize to Josh. I don't think it's more nuanced than that. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Am I wrong to say that? Am I wrong to say that? Milo, stop that. Ethan mentioned something along the lines of he wanted to press Johnny further and be like, so how are you groomed? But it didn't feel appropriate. So I think we had a few moments similar to that where there was like small things. It's not like if Joshua didn't make Johnny go to shows, that would have changed everything. But it just was like, a, huh, should I press more about this? Maybe that's not the most appropriate thing. So I think that's something to take into account for the future. If we ever interview someone again, accusing someone. And you know what? Great. They're, they're saying what they're going to do moving forward from this and what they've learned from it. And I think that that is a very, very, very great thing to, to say moving forward. You know, this happened. 
this is how we're going to stop this from happening in the future. And I think that's a really good thing to say. Of something as serious as this is to have to get a little bit uncomfortable and just be like, hey, can you elaborate on X, Y, and Z? Just because that is the responsible thing to do and what we should have done. We should have followed our gut in certain situations and made him elaborate on them because that would have made it seem more obvious that he wasn't being truthful. Mind you, our interview was the second time we interviewed him. Our first three hour interview, the audio got completely destroyed or the video or one of the things, I forgot what it was. And we had to refilm it all. So we kind of already knew at this point and he just kept repeating the same what? thing, which was the sin. Oh my God. So they, so they did two interviews with Johnny that was like both like, what, like an hour and a half, two hours each? Oh, Johnny has spare time, mama. Do you remember when Johnny was like, Swip it. you know, I have a full-time job and I don't have time to respond to your text. You have time to shit and reshit and shit and reshit and shit and re... No wonder he left that job. Where do you find the time? Holy fuck. That is... Crazy. Intimate that Joshua and Colleen would kind of like tell him, hey, come to the show, but would never comp him tickets. And he also even alluded to like, they didn't even like buy plane tickets or anything like that. Like he made it seem like they really invited him out, that they should have covered everything. He painted it as they were inviting him like as a friend kind of, was actually a much more casual, like you should come to the show. And like literally swoop shows on Twitter, it was like a announcement of Joshua being like, I have a show. And he's like, I have to come. And Joshua's like, cool, come. Like conversations we've had with fans before. Like that's not at all the same thing as come to my show and then not comping any tickets which now looking back, obviously it's like, if they didn't come tickets, because he probably wasn't invited, but I didn't, you know what I mean? Like those are connections that are easy to make now. Well, and also it is implied in Swoop's documentary that the relationship between them was not as close as Johnny portrays it to be. And that he was a bit more of an obsessive fan versus having this really close relationship with Joshua. But at the time of us filming our interview and at the time of our update, really the evidence that we had was not only Johnny saying that they were close, it was kind of Joshua being like, sorry for getting too close. And looking back, I can see how some of what Joshua said might have been just trying to like appease or validate Johnny's feelings and wanting to take accountability for any place where he might have, you know, slipped up or whatever. But ultimately what actually happened is that he did these like blanket apologies that were able to be taken as admissions for a lot of these things. And I just hope in the future with anyone really, like if you're accused- I'm not gonna comment on that much, but I don't think that that is the case. And I think that's like, I think that's putting a lot of it on Josh to kind of not have to address a lot of it yourself. Um, I don't agree with them there, I'm gonna be honest. Um, agree to disagree, I guess of something and you didn't do that, that you stand your ground. It was like, do not admit to it and apologize unless it is something you did. And I understand also the nuance there where it's like Joshua, although I wasn't a fan of Colleen or Joshua, so I didn't really, like I knew they had gotten divorced, but I didn't really follow that whole saga. He seems to be more vocal now about the kind of like treacherous internet relationship he has, you know, where he's just like terrified to speak up because her fans are always up his ass. Like, you know, it's just this like- And he's valid for that. Much like had a hate campaign against him. Right, which is not surprising at all. And it's also something that I acknowledged in our response where I gave him that. I was like, I have no doubt that you've been through some shit with Colleen. I've been there where it's like, okay, you can heal from from something and then literally it pops up again and it just feels like you're fucking right back there. I understand that. And I'm not doubting that you went through some shit with Colleen and especially knowing how nasty she is, I can't imagine divorcing her. But at the same time, speaking from experience, there are times where you have to muster up like anything you have left, like every bit of energy you have left to just say your truth, prove your truth to the best of your ability and then go, you know, just leave it at that. It is a disservice to yourself to not do that and to not stand up for yourself in situations because things can spiral so horribly out of control. People are gonna take things about you and say them anyway, right? They're gonna have, if someone has this strong opinion of you, very rarely, even if you shove proof in their face, would they believe otherwise, but it's worth doing. And like, I, I wish that he hadn't apologized and this is not like me trying to blame him, but I just wish he hadn't apologized for things he didn't do if he didn't do them because it allowed Johnny to have such a voice when he didn't deserve to have that. Just as our interview empowered him to go on other podcasts. Um, number one, I don't really think, you know, God, I don't think you ever have to speak about, I don't think you ever have to like force yourself to speak about something that has happened to you if you don't want to. I don't think it's a case of doing yourself a disservice or anything. And also, I don't necessarily know if that argument applies whenever Josh was reaching out to them and they were reading his statements and rolling their eyes and stuff. I don't necessarily think that's you allowing him to, you know, say his piece and move on. Uh, this topic. Uh. Uh. I love these girls so much. Uh. You know what? They are going to learn something from this. And you know what? For better, for worse, it is going to significantly improve their storytelling it's going to significantly improve their interviewing it's going to significantly improve their podcast not that it isn't great already i love their podcast it's one of the only ones i listen to but like for better for worse they are going to learn something from this and that is going to be very 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 beneficial for both of their careers um again 
their podcast is one of the only ones I listen to. This is nothing against their podcast, but you know what? For better, for worse, they're going to learn something from this. And make up more things. I think that Joshua's apologies empowered him to go spread the narrative that he wanted to because it was basically co-signed. There are a few more claims that he made that are not true that we want to clarify really quick. One of them was that Joshua went on a coffee date with Johnny. Johnny kind of alluded to this multiple times, but then looking back, it's kind of easy to be like, oh wait, he kind of danced around that question because we did ask him multiple times, hey, did you hang out with Joshua? And he would be like, yeah, you know, we went on coffee dates and stuff and kind of just doing things like that. And we're like, okay, but he didn't. So the coffee date that he goes on to describe on multiple interviews is him showing up to an auto show that Joshua was doing and then them having coffee in the convention center surrounded by people. Which is obviously a far different thing than them meeting up and having a one-on-one -on -one, like private relationship. Now there is some tricky, you know, kind of context here where later on after our Johnny interview, we covered something that Adam McIntyre showed, which was Joshua and Colleen befriending, it seemed, these super fan girls that were like vlogging their whole journey to go to the Miranda Sing show and they were so excited. And then it ends up with them in their hotel room all being friendly. And I even say when we cover that, that mm -hmm. we aren't even implying that something sexual or anything illegal by any means went down, but two it's still weird. had their young teenage fans alone in their hotel room. It seemed very, very normal and comfortable for them as well. Yeah, and it's important again to insinuate the no sexual thing because we have maintained that opinion this entire time, both covering Colleen, even though she has weird things with Adam where she was like crossing the line for sure and Trent, obviously. But when it came to Josh Joshua, we even had to ask Johnny multiple times, what was his motive? Because we don't think it was sexual. So why did he want to become friends with teenagers when he was an adult? And what we ultimately came to was that they craved that attention, you know, that attention from their fans. That was that all encompassing attention where it's like, you do no wrong. You're amazing. And it just is like this ego boost, which Joshua again has kind of admitted to where he sought that validation. So that is where things are like tricky as well, which again, I'm sure Joshua will own up to on Swoop's interview, but there was public information that led us to believe that he was not a hundred percent. Like none of this happened and Johnny's just a liar. Yeah. And again, that fit into the, what I said earlier is that this conversation but the problem is that Josh can be guilty of something and it didn't happen to Johnny. You know what I mean? Josh can be guilty of being inappropriate with fans. That doesn't mean he was inappropriate with Johnny. And there's a responsibility when Johnny comes on your platform and speaks for an hour and a half about how Josh was inappropriate with him. Josh being inappropriate with other fans does not mean that he was inappropriate with Johnny. It could add context to it, but unless Johnny is providing you with... Unless Johnny is providing you with so much proof that you don't even want to interview Josh, there's no reason that you shouldn't have also had Josh on. You know, the argument of, you know, you know, most victims don't have proof is completely valid. But what I'm saying here is it's not enough that there is video of Josh being inappropriate with another fan. If Johnny isn't providing any proof, why are you so desperate to hear his point of view rather than Josh? who doesn't have any proof. Surely, like, it's equal here. You know what I mean? I just wish they would, like, I really wish they would have said that they, like, just had, like, a prejudice against Josh and they didn't want to hear what he had to say. I think it would have made them look a lot better. No, I, honestly, I think if they just said, you know what? We listened to Johnny. We ended up liking Johnny. Um, kept up with him on Twitter. We didn't want to hear Josh's point of view. I just think that would have been so much better than like... ...led to a much more general overview of the whole scenario about the pattern of behavior that we were seeing exposed for Colleen, for Trent, for the people around her. And Joshua was around her for a lot of the time period where she was doing inappropriate things. And he does mention several times that the relationship with Colleen was extremely toxic. He's now coming out and saying that it is abusive. And we're not saying that he is a criminal or he, again... Did oh my God, we're not even at the apology just, section. There is proof that he did do some of these things and did hang out one-on-one -on -one with some fans and did video chat one-on-one -on -one with some fans. So that did, that did happen. And because that happened, we believed Johnny, who unfortunately just pretended to be more of a victim than he was. And also we do want to say that I know the term groomer has been thrown out a lot and that Johnny in particular has sure. really seemed to overuse it to the point that I'm not even sure he fully comprehends what it means. And I think as he heard it more, he kind of was like, okay, I think that fits my situation. And he was using it very irresponsibly. So that is another thing we want to apologize to Joshua for because I can't imagine having that attached to you when he, you are also, you have taken accountability for inappropriate things that you've done. And there's a difference between doing something that isn't like traumatizing someone. Like it's like, okay, yeah, you hung out with younger fans, which now we know like, Hold on. You want to apologize to Joshua for it because I can't imagine having that attached to you when he, you are also, you have taken accountability for inappropriate things that you've done. And there's a difference between doing something that isn't like tr I don't know why they needed to say like, we apologize to Josh, even though you acknowledge that you were like inappropriate. Um...
traumatizing someone like it's like okay yeah you hung out with younger fans which now we know like don't do that you know there's certain things that in retrospect he's probably horrified by you know and if you do take accountability and you have grown up and you have moved on from that behavior then i think that that's a separate story but i think my overall sentiment at the time was yes you took accountability but johnny in particular is looking back at all of this and is very hurt by it and i think that again we talk about like impact versus intent it's like whatever you thought you were doing at the time if it hurts someone and they're looking back and saying this hurt me then they deserve to be able to talk about that that was like what we were overall feeling but looking back again even though he did not come onto our podcast and say joshua david evans is a groomer he tried to get me alone he tried to do x y he did he worse said, again, gateway groomer is how he described joshua one time and he did so to insinuate that colleen was the ultimate groomer which doesn't make any sense now looking back i know but if he's if he's repeating for like an hour and a half about like how awful josh is that's almost worse than him just sitting down and saying like he's a groomer you're like detailing how he's an awful person yeah, it's he was worse. For her. But he says he was a gateway groomer that like whittled him down into this victim that Colleen like swooped up and like took under her wing Swoop. and ultimately like finished him off. Like that was like his sentiment, but he did not come onto our podcast to say what he said on H3 or what he said on Swoop, which is like, yes, they groomed me. But really quickly, just to finish off the last lie that he told um, on our show was that he was 17 when he went to go visit Joshua in California and see his show. And that was when Joshua had kind of put him down when he said that he came out to Joshua and Joshua was like, why are you telling me this? You shouldn't tell your parents. He says he was 17 turning 18. That was a lie. He was 18 turning 19. And maybe if it was that one lie, you could be like, well, maybe he didn't remember the dates. But now consider Considering everything else, it absolutely seems intentional to make himself seem younger, to make it seem worse than it was. And just like the other things, that is not something that's, that's illegal. also valid for them to admit, you know what I mean? Like, he, he changed things to make it seem more extreme, you know? It was just another factor that he added to the story that made Joshua not seem like the best. So now that we've clarified the claims that Johnny made on the show, we want to be clear about what we've learned and what we're sorry for and how we want to move forward from here. I think to Joshua directly, we are sorry for a few things. I think we are absolutely sorry for not including you in our statement, like we mentioned. Maybe people wouldn't have liked how we condensed it, but we should have tried and like just put him in there because if it was me, if he was returned, I would be pissed if I wasn't mentioned too. Absolutely. So we are sorry. We are also sorry that we allowed Johnny, regardless of the context that we had at the time, looking back now, knowing what we know, we are sorry that our platform was used to hurt you. And I also just wish that we could have had more information at the time so that that didn't happen. Because our intention was absolutely never to purposely spread misinformation, to paint Joshua in a light that was not accurate. And I hope that the false claims that Johnny has made about Joshua do not continue to follow him around because he does not deserve that. And he is trying to, it appears, to take accountability for the things that he did do. And we're sorry that Johnny took advantage of that. I think personally where I feel like we can try our best, even though, like I said, it is against everything in me to be like, let's hear this guy out who's accused of something. That goes against my entire soul and body. Like I have to be honest with that. But I think that considering Considering the crime we're talking about or the accused thing we're talking about, I think there's degrees to this for sure. I think that we can open an avenue to allow someone who is accused of something to send us proof of something that they'd like for us to either correct or completely take out or anything in the future. If we get anything wrong, we need to have a kind of way to handle someone saying, hey, they're lying. And okay, but to follow on with the point Jesse said earlier about like how many people that have been abused who don't get believed because they don't have proof. So would you not believe Josh if he didn't have proof countering things that Johnny didn't have proof for? Then that goes against the point of, you know, people don't get believed if they don't have proof. So... It's, uh, it's just, it's not a good point to bring up because it doesn't apply to this specific thing. And I can't say that looking back, if we would have opened, let's say if he would have emailed us and we would have said, hey, okay, let us know what happened. And it was just his words saying like, none of that happened. That isn't going to be enough for me in the future, if I'm being honest, to be like, oh, you weren't accused of anything after they've admitted to things that there's enough evidence. You know, we need like something to hold on to, something tangible, even something like um, the proof that Swoop showed of the DMs, where their DMs were like completely not weird at all and not strange. And it was actually just Johnny like, hey, hey, can I come? Can I come? Like it was like very much a super fan. Like even something like that, anything that we can consider, we want to be open to in the future in terms of having the option for someone to send us evidence that they are not guilty of what they're being accused of otherwise but what about people that don't have pr you know like that previous point johnny didn't have any proof really what we're hoping for is that we don't run into people like johnny again i could say it a million times hindsight is 2020 i think that this situation has however brought out a lot of ugliness in not just the situation itself but i think in people almost pretending that they knew this all along when they didn't we definitely have been receiving quite a bit of opinions on twitter and a lot of people citing things that we either didn't say or misrepresenting how we did say them which i'm sure joshua is like now you know how i feel one of the things was that in our response to him after our interview we did cite joshua saying that other news outlets had reached out for comment and that we didn't and we made the comment that we're not a news outlet we're a podcast and people have taken that to mean that we don't care what you have to say we're ignoring any evidence you provide to us we don't care about your side at all it's funny because it's like people are talking about misinformation and context and then right after i say i don't think that rids us of responsibility no. of spreading misinformation obviously because we have a platform that does not rid us of any responsibility to not spread misinformation because we have a platform like i literally said that and yes we're not journalists and what we meant by that is that we are not obligated to hear out somebody who's accused of something now 
are we obligated to do our due diligence, which is what people are accusing us of not doing, and gather everything that's currently available online and apply it to make an informed opinion and, you know, talk about it in an informed way? Yeah. Do I think we did that at the time? Yeah. We had zero reason, based on Joshua's own statements, to doubt that this wasn't true because he had not denied it. He had taken accountability for things multiple times. And while some of his admitting to things was vague, he was providing kind of a blanket apology that acknowledged Johnny's experience as a whole. There are people that are pretending that they knew all along that what Swoop dropped in that documentary was the truth. Like there are people that are very much acting like, how did you guys not know? And it's the same way that many people didn't know. Did some people have a gut feeling? I see a lot of people talking about like, I always had a weird feeling about Johnny and certain things, sure. But there was this one person in particular, and I'm not calling this person out to draw hate their way or anything. It is literally like a case study on the overall energy that's like circulating us and this situation right now. There was this person named AKA Stardust on Twitter and they're a self-proclaimed like pop culture commentary. They've covered our podcast sometimes and they just cover things that are happening online. And they were critical of us, like very critical, which is fine, but they were just one of the people that were like, they mocked him on Twitter, just like citing your tweets where you were being nice to Johnny and saying that like, this looks grim for us. And it was just like a repetitive, you know, condemning us and supporting Josh in his statement. But what's interesting is that people went on to find that this person in particular had a tweet up about their previous opinions on Joshua David Evans. And in response in particular to Johnny, basically saying to Joshua David Evans, who had just posted his DM with Johnny. And this person, AKA Stardust, responded to him saying so many words and it's all about himself with a rolling eye emoji. Cut him out like a tumor. After you talk to the press, that is. That was him referring to Joshua David Evans as a tumor that needed to be cut out. And then when all of this new information was revealed, it empowered people who felt the same way we felt to be like, how did you not fucking know? And so when this person was called out, they went on to say, someone has been digging through my old tweets trying to create some kind of gotcha moment. I want to be transparent. Since the revelations in Swoop's doc, I've gone back and deleted most, if not all of my tweets endorsing Johnny. I disavow everything about him now that the truth has come to light. If you come across any old tweets of mine supporting Johnny that I've missed, please know that they no longer reflect my current views. And I couldn't help but feel like, Huh? Simultaneously, it's like you're accusing us of not caring and not doing our due diligence and just believing things that we shouldn't have and we should have known. And we also deleted our interview with him as soon as this all came out. The difference is though, is that people like this that are like a smaller commentator Twitter account can get away with that, you know, just deleting and oh, I never had that opinion. But the fact is painfully so, and a lot of us may have like moral conflict with like 100% just blindly believing Johnny. A lot of us did, most of us did. Adam did, Swoop did, H3 did. Like everyone believed him because nobody had a reason not to. And it's not to say like, we were not wrong about anything. Again, our demeanor, the way we handled it, we needed to be more serious, we needed to be more thorough. There are a million things I wish I could change, but to sit here and also just be like, oh, we should have known is, is not 100% authentic. And I can't sit here and do no, it. And especially because a lot of the information that Swift used to expose this new information was not readily available to the public. It was through anonymous interviews of people that had reached out to her and her researchers finding things and noticing very minute details that exposed that he had doctored text messages and stuff. But it was not stuff that we would have as a podcast, again, not an investigative platform where we had some. Okay. I want to give a comment on this. Um, so... I think that's interesting um, where they're saying, you know, Adam, Swip, Becky, Oliver, everyone, H3, you know, we all believed Johnny and we all, you know, talked about Johnny and stuff. Um, I'm not saying this as a re retaliation in any way, um, but Josh never gave me proof that Johnny was lying. And Johnny never gave me proof that he was lying. However, from the start, I never platformed Johnny's Josh story other than being like, oh, go watch Johnny's video. Or, you know, Josh has done some weird stuff. Like, you can fact check me on that. Because I never, ever, ever believed the Josh stuff. Because I asked Johnny for proof, and I never got it. So... I never platformed the Johnny Josh stuff. I never watched his video on Josh on stream. I, I, like, I never, I never did any of that. The Colleen stuff was separate because, fuck me, it was like watching my own, my own video. It was my stories, but just, you know, extravagant. I knew because I reached out to Johnny and he never once validated any of the Josh stuff. So... I do want to separate myself a little bit from that. And I'm not saying this to be um, above anyone or I knew because I know that that's the, the argument they're making. Like it's like pinning people against each other and who believed and who didn't. I believed Johnny on all of the Colleen stuff. I never believed Johnny on the Josh stuff, which is why I got so much criticism for not platforming the Johnny Joshua stuff. And I got so much criticism for, say it with me, still following Josh on social media and still tweeting Josh. I got so much criticism for that. Johnny spoke on the record about how disappointed he was. He told Swip that I'm just young and naive. I don't even think that made the final cut. 
but I didn't have any proof on either side and I didn't platform it. So I do want to take myself a little bit away from this whenever my name is being brought up here because I believed Johnny on the Colleen and um, Corey stuff because he was basically telling me my own stories, right? And my stories happened to me. So like, oh my God, it happened to you too? Wow, that's crazy. The Josh thing is different, which is why I never reacted to any of the Josh stuff other than redirecting you so that people wouldn't say that I was just platforming a abuser because I still follow Josh and still tweeted him back and forth. Um, so I got so much criticism online for my association with Josh. So I do also just want to bring that up. Um, I, I'm not saying this in any way um, against Jesse and Lily, but I also kind of want to stand up for myself a little bit because I did get so much backlash when the Johnny Josh thing was happening, when he was doing all these interviews and the more interviews he did, the more backlash I got, you know, for still following Josh and stuff. So I do want to stand up for myself a little bit there. Um, it's not in any way to throw anyone under the bus. It's just giving a little bit of context on where I'm at right now. So... No, so don't serious. take it that way. We didn't have a team of people fact-checking every single thing. And in the future, we will be so much more diligent about accepting what claims are being made on our platform and whether there is stuff to back them up. But in terms of us being able to know ahead of time, everything that we had available pointed to he was not lying. So we didn't ignore evidence. We didn't choose to defame someone because we wanted clicks. Like, that was not our motive in the slightest. And I'm, I'm just I thinking, I think the only time that I ever had Johnny on my Twitch or on my YouTube where he talked about Josh was whenever I reacted to him talking about Josh on the H3. And I think there was a clip somewhere where people ask me why I don't talk about Josh. And I literally say, me and Josh have sorted our stuff behind the scenes. And if you want to see what, you know, Johnny's saying, go and see what he's saying. You know, I think that was my extent of, I can look into it. I can stand corrected on that, but I'm, I literally am like 98% sure that what's happened. Chat, validate me or validate me on that. Um, verify me on that. Because whenever I had to watch Josh being talked about by Johnny, I would always sit with a fucking poker face on because I knew he was lying. But I was never going to go on the record with saying that. So that feeds into the argument of like, I wasn't speaking up. But who was I to say that someone wasn't telling the truth? I have my own shit. And also, a conversation I had with a couple of people that are involved in this story is, you know, people love to, like, Johnny, Oliver, Becky, Adam, Ella, like, there is not once that any of us are just people saying our stories and have now been gripped in as the victims. You know what I mean? We all live our own lives. We have our own opinions. We've been through our own shit. And sure we can all fall back on each other but this isn't something that we all need to be moving as a herd or we're all one person or one entity and um i always felt that way about johnny and johnny abused the fact that it was like the victims you know all together and i like hello Joshua was upset and he has the right to a certain extent to feel any way that he feels right now because this has probably been extremely frustrating. But Swoop said in her documentary multiple, multiple times that we were manipulated by Johnny and that she was manipulated by Johnny and that H3 was manipulated by Johnny. And even in her second part where she asks Johnny alongside the other victims what his opinion on Colleen's ukulele video was, like what his reaction was. And she was covering all the victims' opinions side by side. In that video, she hinted that she knew that Johnny was lying. Like she said, oh, there's a big bombshell coming in part three if I can confirm what I need to confirm. That's just a little uh, piece of the interview that I did with Johnny that will be featured in part three. Three, it is an intense interview and we cover some things that just have not really been discussed anywhere and it is it's eye-opening to say the least uh, and there is also uh, a bombshell that might happen in part three I have been waiting to even be able to speak about this and I still can't uh, because we are waiting for some things to be confirmed but if that is the case then part three is going to be just mind-boggling so be ready for that I think that now again having the information we have currently because of Swoop's documentary we would have done everything differently but it's just so much easier said than done in the moment considering what we had at that time and it is unfortunate and painful to be categorized as people who also a very valid that, point and just run rampant on the internet for clicks and views obviously that sucks but all we can do is do our due diligence now moving forward and i'm not even saying that that's not what we did in the time that we spoke about everything but even more so being very selective of whom we have on this podcast to speak whom we give our platform to and like allow it's one thing to cover their stories another thing to have them sitting here and speaking to us and i also think we'll avoid having anyone on so early on in 
the whole scenario as it play out. Yeah, because as we said, even in our interview, he doesn't make as many false claims as then he continues to make more and more as he does other appearances. And had we not interviewed him so quickly, we would have then garnered the information that did make us doubt his story. But at the time we did interview him, there was nothing that made us think he was lying. So I think that pretty much brings us up to where we are now. And um, I think we covered everything, hopefully. Yeah, so full transparency, we did reach out to Joshua David Evans and obviously we're aware we are not his favorite people and we're not really expecting a response, but we did want to reach out in order to give an opportunity that we didn't originally give to him considering the context of everything. And that was for him to be able to tell us any evidence that we missed, that we ignored, that we did not address. We wanted him to be able to have an avenue now to be able to show us what we didn't address so that we can do so. We have deep dived into every statement, every tweet that happened prior to Swoop's video and we can't find anywhere where we were given evidence that we ignored. But if it is out there, we want to know about it, we want to address it, and we want to make it right in any way that we possibly can because I feel like that's really the only thing we can do now. Absolutely. We do want to, again, apologize to Joshua for being complicit in spreading information that was not true. And we're sorry that he had to experience that because while he has taken accountability for some stuff, there's no reason that he should be being accused of things he didn't do. And it was never our intention to try and purposely spread that or ignore anything that would contradict that. So again, we're very sorry, Joshua. We're also, of course, sorry to the victims for how our role in this might have detracted from their stories. And honestly, we're just mortified that all this has happened and we're sorry. And I want to be just specific to our viewers right now. I really hope that you can trust that we are constantly listening and growing wherever we feel we need to. We are trying to be as self-aware and as proactive as possible. We're going to make mistakes. And I hope that you can trust that no matter what mistakes we make to no matter what degree, we are always going to own up to it, no matter how embarrassing it is. If we hate that we did something, things happen. We do speak candidly on the show. Sometimes we have missteps and sometimes we flat out just make a mistake. And we hope that you understand that we take those seriously. We listen and we have every intention of owning up to anything that we do so that we can make sure that it never happens again, because that's ultimately the goal. It's not so much about whether we're embarrassed or don't want to own up to something or anything. It, none of that matters. We just want to make sure that the show moving forward is better than it was, especially when it comes to making mistakes. So I hope that you can trust that we take this seriously, that we will implement changes in the future and that this is a space where you are free to let us know where and how we went wrong and we will always take it into consideration. And while we don't expect a response from Joshua because we did not respond to his public tweets or anything, we understand if he doesn't want to talk to us, that makes total sense. But regardless, we are keeping down the videos, the interview and our follow-up video. We're absolutely not trying to keep spreading anything that's false and are willing to correct anything that was false. And if he does respond um, after we film this, but by the time this comes up, we will include it. But also if he watches this and wants to respond after, we will include it in our next episode. There's not a time limit. Right, exactly. And honestly, that's just kind of the least we could do at this time considering everything that has come out. So sincerely, we are genuinely so sorry for the situation and the role we played in this and for how this all transpired. And we really hope to just prevent anything like this from ever happening again, because it really was just so frustrating and unfortunate. And just detrimental to everyone involved. Absolutely. But I think that pretty much covers it. And thank you guys for hearing us out. Uh, we know that was a lot, but we felt like it was important to go through everything and explain how we arrived here. Yeah, for sure. And just in case you're wondering, we do plan on returning with our regularly scheduled unrelated show on Friday. We did have a pre-filmed episode that was supposed to- Okay. The last 12 minutes should have been the entire video. The last 12 to 15 minutes should have been the entire video. We did not need like 50 minutes of boom, 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 proof, no proof, proof, no proof, 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 proof no. The last 15, 12 minutes is really good. It is really good and is exactly like why I like Jesse and Lily. It's acknowledgement. It's moving forward. What are we going to do? It's talking to the viewers. It's talking to Josh. It's talking loosely about Johnny because he can go fuck himself now. Like it is really, really, really good. And I just like, I just don't know why they didn't just make the video that like, with so much love, everything but that was completely irrelevant. You know what I mean? The last 12 minutes were good. Really, really, really good. Really good. Really respectful. Productive. But everything else was really not so great. And I also like... I'm like, okay, so if the other 50 minutes was going to be involved, like, should the last 12 minutes have been at the start then? So, like, most of my people, like, because obviously if I upload a video on YouTube that's 50 minutes, most people will watch probably 25 minutes of it. So a lot of people aren't going to see the ending of it, but the ending is, like, the best, 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 best part of it. The ending is really good. The ending is perfect when it comes to addressing what happened what went wrong, what you did wrong, you were blindsided, what you're going to do moving forward. Very productive. 
saying, we're sorry to Josh, we don't expect a reply, ticks every box for being great and how to handle this. Everything else, not so great. Not so great. And if anything, I'm really glad that they had that last like 12 minutes because that is the creators that I fucking love. And I love this podcast. I really, really, really do. This is a shitty situation. And clearly it blindsided them like everyone else. And I think that there was a lot in this video that didn't need to be there. And I think that the last 12, 15 minutes was great. Um, so I'm glad you still like them. I love Jesse and Lily. Um, this is just an unfortunate situation. So I'm going to leave it there. And I am sending them both love because I know that they have good intentions. And I know that like everyone else, it, it wrapped up in this. And that was what Johnny preyed on. Like, so I'm going to leave it there. Okay, bye.